Hey, this is Kayo from EssentialDeveloper.com. In this video, I want to share with you a way to solve retain cycles with a weak ref type, so you can keep your modules separated and abstract without the need to make your class properties weak. So let's go! Okay, so I've created a simple project it's a simple weather app. As you can see in the user interface, we have a label and a reload button. So if I press the reload button, it updates the data. And right now I'm just generating random numbers, but at some point we can fetch this data from an API. So how are we composing the view controller with the other modules or how are we setting the reload data closure property? Let's have a look at our app delegate. Right here, we cast our view controller. Then, if we get the right type here, the weather view controller type, we can configure it. So, we create a presenter, then we create a weather fetcher, and we compose the view controller with the weather fetcher by assigning the fetch function to the reload data closure. So, let's have a look at this weather use case type. As you can see, it has an output property that conforms to the protocol fetch weather use case output that has one method, did fetch weather data and whether data is just a struct with a temperature property. Very simple. So every time we call fetch, we're going to generate a random temperature and pass the data forward to the output. And pay attention to this fetch method because that's exactly what we're passing to the view controller. And if we check our presenter, it also has an output, and the output has one method as well, and it passes now a view model. And the view model is a struct and also has a temperature property but this time it's a string. It's a formatted string ready to be rendered on the screen. So the presenter conforms to the use case output protocol. It gets the weather data and formats it to a presentable view model and passes the result to the output. That is the view controller. So right here, we implement the present method and we update the label. Very simple, but there's a problem. There is a retain cycle here. So let's have a look at the architecture for this application and let's investigate how we can fix the memory leak. So here it is, we have the business logic layer where we have our fetch weather use case and the output protocol and the weather data type. As you can see, no errors come out of this module so it doesn't depend on any other module. Then we have the presenter module where we have our weather data presenter that will map weather data into weather view model and pass the result to the presenter output protocol that the view controller implements. So the view controller will receive weather view models and render the data on the screen. So the presentation module depends on the business logic module and the UI module depends on the presentation module. But the presentation doesn't know about the UI. There are no errors coming out of this module and going into the UI module. And this UI module also depends on UI kit because our view controller is a subclass of UI view controller and it communicates with UI views. But as you can see, our view controller doesn't create presenters and presenters don't create our business logic. So we have a main module where our app delegate lives and all the composition happens there. So the main module composes all of the other modules together. And as part of this composition, we set the reload data closure as the fetch weather use case fetch method. So as you can see, this arrow it's dotted because it's not a direct dependency on this module. This composition is made on the main module. But if you follow the arrows now, we have a retain cycle. Because look how the use case holds a reference to the output. There is the presenter. Then the presenter holds a reference to the controller. And the controller will hold an implicit reference to the use case again. So then we have a retain cycle. So a common way to solve this is to make one of those references weak. And a good practice is to look at the view controller first, since it doesn't need any strong reference from outside modules. As soon as you present a view controller on the screen, UIKit will have a strong reference to the view controller. So we normally have a look at the object that references the view controller, in this case, the presenter, through the output protocol. And normally we can set this reference here as weak, and then that's solved. So let's try this out. But first, I want to have a failing unit test that proves that there is a retain cycle there. And I have created one in my app delegate tests. And let me run all the tests. 
and they pass. But if I add those assertions here, that will check the weak references are pointing to nil after all the test passes, we get a failed assertion because there's a memory leak in the view controller composition. So let's try out using the weak reference in our presenter. And that would be very simple to do. We can just make the output as a weak var. So it needs to be optional. And we can only have weak variables for class types. As you can see the error here, we need to constrain our protocol to be a class only protocol. And I don't like that, but let's see if that works. Okay, so the memory leak is fixed. The tests are passing, so it looks good. But I don't like this design now because memory management is a responsibility. And I don't think it's the presenter responsibility to know that its output must be weak. Because if we go back to our architecture, there was a clear separation where the presenter had no dependency on the view controller. But now implicitly, we know that the presenter is holding a view controller and the view controller is held by UIKit. So we say, well, just add a weak keyword there, make this protocol be class only and that's solved. But now we broke the abstraction here because this presenter output, for example, could be used by another type in between here. For example, a cache, a logger or analytics. So as soon as we made the output variable weak, we limited our options on how to compose those modules because implicitly we are saying that the presenter output will always be a view controller or a type that is held by some other type. But we don't know that. And we want to keep our options open as much as we can. So we can keep composing and changing the requirements without breaking the app or the tests all the time. And there is a way to do so. So let's go back here to our architecture and let's think who is responsible for memory management or for combining those objects together. When we think about this, it's clear it's the main module. In this case, the app delegate or a factory or an assembler. It's a type that composes all the objects together. This type is responsible for setting up the object graph and making sure there is no memory leaks in the composition. And that's exactly where my tests are as well. So I have my unit tests checking those modules in isolation. And then I have my integration tests through the main module that checks that the composition is correct and there is no retained cycles. So what we actually need here is something like a box, a box where we can put our view controller type and inside the box, the view controller is just a weak property and the box is created by the main module. So the presenter now can still keep the reference as strong, but the presenter will be referencing a box and the box references the view controller weakly. So let's give it a go. First of all, let's undo this and run the test again to prove that we have the memory leak. There it is. So let's go back to our app delegate where we compose those types together. But now let's create our box type. We can make it a class. And now our goal is to wikify the presenter output protocol. So we can call it a weak ref for reference. And this is the box type. And as we said, we need to have a weak property for the object that conforms to the presenter output protocol. So let's call this property just object. Let's give it a type of the output protocol. And we need an initializer. Okay, so we have our box now. And the compiler is complaining again because the output protocol is not constrained for classes only. But we can fix that by telling the compiler this is any object that conforms to the protocol. Okay, the compiler is happy now. So if we put our view controller inside the box, the compiler now is going to complain that the weak ref does not conform to the presenter output protocol. And that's true. And we can make it conform to the output protocol. And what should we do in this implementation? Let's just pass the message forward to our object. Let's run our tests again. And they pass. No memory leaks anymore. And we keep our modules separated and we keep our options open by not forcing any strict memory management to our types. And also we don't force implementations of the output protocol to be class only. So you can have a struct or an enum that conforms to this protocol if you want. And this is a tiny app, but when you start composing types together, you're gonna see this pattern happening over and over again. So instead of creating a weak ref for each type, we can use generics 
to create a generic implementation of WeakRef that can work for any reference type. So first of all, we can set our generic type in here and constrain it to an object type. And now we can use the type. Now we can remove our protocol constraints. And we can now create extensions for our weak ref conforming to the protocol only when the wrapped type also conforms to the protocol. Let's build. And there it is. Anytime we have a protocol and we want to compose them in a way that might have a retained cycle, we can create a weak ref extension conforming to the protocol. We forward the message to the main type and that's it. Retain cycle solved without breaking our abstractions and keeping our modules clean. And again, composition is a responsibility and memory management is also a responsibility that should live in the main module or in the factory modules or composer modules. And now we have this clean architecture here and we can compose those modules in any way we want. And if you are afraid that an implementation here could be wrong, for example, if you forget to pass the message or pass the wrong message, you should have tests for that. And as you can see, if I have a mistake here, I have a failing test. If I solve it, run the test again, it passes. So by having this clean architecture with this clear separation of concerns, we can achieve a very high coverage and it's very simple to create and gives you a lot of confidence and allows you to welcome requirement changes. You can keep adding features and composing new modules without having to break your application, which means you can collaborate much better with your peers and you can achieve those very difficult deadlines. So that's it for today. Don't forget to check the description. We always add links and more material for you to learn more about the subject of the video. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe and I see you next time. Mm -hmm.